Welcome. My name is George Pearson, and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now, I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video, though, is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. In this Photoshop Elements project we're going to be applying animal makeup onto a girl's face. As you can see here, we're actually going to be painting an animal right onto her face. This is a picture of a tiger just applied onto her face. We're also going to be improving the image a bit. Fairly straightforward technique as you can see here we have two copies of the image. I'll show you why in just a little bit. Another copy of just the hair. Again I'll show you why. A picture of the tiger. This is the original resized and then we come in and mask that in to just show the tiger on her face and then use blending modes in here to blend everything together in the proper way. Let's now see how this is done from start to finish. Let's just get that out of the way. Here's the original picture. Notice how it's really kind of too light and we're seeing too much of her image. I just want to come in here on the face. We're going to first crop in and then here's our tiger picture. We'll be using that tiger picture. So we're going to crop in on this image and just come in a little bit tighter in here. We'll use crop. It's right down there right where it says modify. And I'll just bring that in until we can focus our attention just on just on the face. That's all I really care about in here. You know, something kind of like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to bring the attention in on just the face for this particular technique. Okay, let's zoom back in a little bit. The crop you choose is really up to you. I just want to come in nice and tight on the face. You can see how this effect works. Now, it's a fairly washed out photo, as you can see. An easy way to fix that is to add more of the photo onto itself using a blending mode. So let's take the background layer and make a new layer. There we go. We're now going to blend this copy into this copy and double up on our colors. And we'll do that with the multiply blending mode. There it is. See how much richer that is automatically. And all we did was was blend one copy into the into itself. So it just richens up all of our colors and brings the image much closer to the original. So there's the washed out original and here is the improved version bringing all of our colors back in again. Now the hair is a little bit washed. I want to kind of lighten that hair up. And we're going to do that with another copy of this. We'll first need to make a selection of the hair. This doesn't need to be perfect. It can be fairly loose selection. I'll just use my favorite polygonal lasso tool. You can see I have this set at anti-aliasing, no feather, and new selection. The reason it doesn't need to be critical is we still have the picture in behind. Actually, both these copies in behind. So if if you're off a little bit on the edge, you'll be seeing the picture from behind that. So, and that's going to make it you know nice and easy. As long as you don't move anything around, this will work out perfectly. So I'll just make a, a fairly quick selection around the hair here, just allowing me to bring that hair out. And I'll come way down here and then come in around this side and just around the face. Now on this if you need to error at all, you need to make a little bit of a, a shift in your position, shift it into the hair as opposed to into the face. You'll have a better effect. And again we're just going to be doing this to give us a chance to adjust the hair values a little bit. And just roughly follow along the shape of the hair. Again, this doesn't need to be 
perfect by any means. This would be good enough. Just kind of come around and do a little quick selection on this. And if you're using the polygonal lasso tool, don't click too quickly on it. If you do, it's going to collapse the selection down. You'll have to start over again. So make sure you take a breath between each one of your clicks. Just take a bit of time. Come right back to the beginning here. Now notice as I move it up to the beginning, get a little circle next to the icon. There it is. That tells me that I'm at the beginning. If I click there, it then closes that out. Let's make a copy now, a new layer on this. So layer, new via copy. And that gives us a layer with just the hair. Notice how the hair is darker all of a sudden. There it is, light, and there's much darker. So I actually use this to darken the hair down if you want to. That's not what I want to do. I want to lighten the hair and not darken it. So let's go up here. We're going to go to a soft light right there. There it is. So there's the original, and there's the soft light. See how that just brings a richness back into the hair. So the richness of the hair is now matching the richness of the eyes and the richness of the lips and the shading. So just a little layer copy there, soft light, and that brings some life back into the hair again. Okay, the girl picture part of this is now finished. It's, it's that easy. That's all taken care of. Now we need to do the tricky part. And that involves this tiger. We'll be using the actual tiger for the makeup. So bring the tiger, pull him in. There we go. And we're going to be resizing the tiger to fit on the girl's face. And I cannot close that file. We don't need that any anymore. He's a little bit too large. So I'm going to pull him down just a bit. I'm just going to kind of quickly judge here to get the eyes at about the right spacing. That's pretty close. Let's now make him a little bit transparent. Bring the opacity down like that so I can see through. So there's the tiger. There's the tiger eyes. And I'm going to be placing one tiger eye right over her eye here. Now it's kind of bouncing around a little bit. That's, so the snap is on. Let's go up here to view and let's undo snap. To document bounds. That's good. Okay. So now I can get that eye exactly. So I'm looking at this one right here. I'm getting that exactly in place. The mouth is pretty close. So you know there, there's her mouth underneath. Just see that. That's pretty close. This eye is off a little bit. So I want to distort the image to get that eye in the right place. So go up to image, transform, distort, and I'll grab this upper left hand corner. And I'm now going to kind of just move the image around until I get the eyes to line up properly. And then just move that over, get the mouth lined up again. About like that. And this is, is a little bit of a kind of a, a give and take to go back and forth a little bit until everything is lined up exactly right. But that's that looks like we're right there. So I'll set that in place. And we can see now that you know the eyes are correct, the mouth is correct, but the head up here isn't. There's a little bit of a problem right there. I want to have this makeup here going clear to the top of the head. So we're going to clone stamp this bit and just kind of move it up to that section. So let's grab our clone stamp tool and make it a little bit larger. It's set at 25 right now. I'll set this to 50. There we go. And then hold the Alt key down and grab this bit of this hair and just kind of bring that up a little bit. We don't need much, just enough to come into the forehead, up to the forehead area. There we go. Okay, now that we have that set, the tiger is in place. The eyes are lined up pretty well. The mouth is lined up about where I want it. Now we want to show just the tiger itself. We want to actually create a mask on this. And we're going to be doing that by creating a mask around the girl's face and then applying that up onto the tiger. 
and we'll then modify that as well. So let's come down here to this image and I'll grab the polygonal lasso tool. I'm just going to make a quick selection just right along the edge of the hairline here. Again, we can modify this, adjust this after we get this mask set in place. This is just a, a first rough draft. And let's go along the cheek. And I'm going to follow up along the hairline. And up into our shadow up here. That's good. And then finish that off. So there's our selection. Let's go back up here to the tiger image. I'm going to bring the opacity all the way up to 100 now. And just check those eyes. Looks good. Okay, now that we have that position, let's go ahead and make a layer mask. Click on layer mask. It's going to take the selection and create a layer mask just from that selection. There we are. Let's bring that transparency down a little bit. And we can just see how things are looking. Looks pretty good. It's a little rough right there. Next thing we want to do is we want to come in and open up the area for the eyes and the mouth. And we do that by painting black. Black is going to hide tiger image and white show. So I want to have a black brush, fairly small. That's a pretty good size. Let's just bring up our colors here. Make sure we're on black like that. And make sure on the mask. Click on the mask itself. You see that light blue cyan outline? That lets me know that I'm on the mask. So I can now come in and I can begin to paint right around the girl's eyes. Like that, just showing the girl's eyes instead of showing the tiger. And then same thing for the mouth. You can kind of see where the mouth is through this. So I'll come in here and we'll just paint in on the mouth like that. Looks pretty good. Let me just check our opacity. Okay, that's why I thought the opacity is down to. Let me bring that opacity up. And make sure the eyes are really showing well. And then our mouth is showing well. Okay, so we have the tiger image and the eyes and mouth showing. Now we need to blend the tiger into her actual face. And that's simply using a blending mode up here. We're going to be taking the colors and burning the colors into her face. So go back here, double click on this to get you back onto the image side. Blending modes and color burn like that. And it actually burns the colors into her coloration. Now we can check at this point. Everything looks pretty good. I can maybe bring the opacity down a bit on that. We're actually not too bad. There's there's full opacity. Too much, obviously. Bring the opacity down to get just the right level of makeup on that. And then it's a little bit of a hard edge around here. I think I'm going to come in here and soften down that edge. We can do that right on the mask. Let's go to the mask. Go over here, we'll come up to this tool here. This is the blur tool. Right there, let's check our size. Brush size is a bit small. And bring the brush size up to 50 again. Soft brush, that looks good. And I'm just going to paint right along that edge. And just kind of follow around the edge here. And that's going to soften up the edge of the mask by blurring it out. That will help then to blend that edge into the rest of the picture.
and there we go there is the animal makeup on a girl notice how we're actually using the picture the photograph and actually applying the photograph right onto the girl's face giving her this very very exotic animal makeup and then just a couple of tricks of course down here to improve the image one was the hair right there just a soft light to brighten the hair up a little bit and the other one was duplicating the image itself so we brought our values back into the image and then brightened the hair up and applied the makeup so there you go that's how you do animal makeup you know photographic style animal makeup thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.